in the name of my ancestors peace forever and always and welcome to another edition of what we call the realities temple on earth internet ministry I am the gatekeeper or the host of this uh, program known here on social media wherever you may find me I am known as the mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snub Nub 7, I am your soul brother, number one. It was the 1970s, and my mother who really didn't do a lot in her life. She liked to drink, she liked to smoke a little bit, but she wasn't a, a party animal. She didn't go out to the clubs and all that type of thing a, a lot. She didn't really, went to the movies now and then. She really didn't do too much. But she did listen to music like many of us do right now. We like to listen to uh, these audio recordings and songs make us dance, make us smile. In our house there was no, I don't remember Motown there was uh, George Benson. There was James Brown. And some other type artists. But my mother never really got into Motown. So Motown was new. I, I was introduced to Motown probably by the 80s. Matter of fact, when I was first introduced to the Jackson 5, around 1977, 1978, somewhere around there. We did, my mother didn't really listen to Motown artists. One of her first artists that she really, really liked was Al Green. And uh, she was crazy about Al Green. And I remember that one song, I don't, really remember a lot of Al Green uh, music. I really don't know a lot about Al Green, but it was this one song I heard all the time, Stay Together. Ah, let's stay together. <laughs> so, I, you know, he, Al Green had that falsetto type voice. <laughs> My mother was crazy about Al Green. So I remember one day her and a girlfriend they got tickets to go see Al Green. My mother was so excited. This is why I can remember this just like it was yesterday because it wasn't too many of these events. It wasn't uh, a lot of times where I saw my mother happy and so they got ready. We going to see Al Green. And by this time, we were old enough as children. Well, even when we was very, very young, my mother left us at, at home all the time. We never had a babysitter, except when we was very, very young. I mean, very, very small. But as long as I can remember, my mother take off for days, left us by ourselves. And so her and a girlfriend, they went to see Al Green. They was excited. And so hours passed and we thought mama was gonna come home and tell us how thrilling it was to go see Al Green. She came to the house with a frown and a snarl. And of course I tried 
to avoid profanity and things of that nature here on our broadcast, she was really upset with Al Green. That Negro. Basically, I don't know, maybe they wanted a handshake or autograph. I don't know what, it, what exactly happened, but he pissed her off. And she described her experience with Al Green. He was a nasty, pompous, arrogant thing. And I don't believe she played Al Green's records anymore. She was done with Al Green. And see, many of us, we don't know these people that we admire. We don't know Michael Jackson. We don't know, I don't know Terry Ellis. I, we, we don't know the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We, don't, we never knew Elijah Muhammad. We don't know T.D. Jakes or Joel Osteen, uh, President Biden. We don't know these, these people. And we admire them. And some of us, we become fanatical over them. My mother wasn't a fanatic. She just liked Al Green music. My mother was fanatical over nobody. But she was really upset how she was treated by somebody she admired somebody's music that she liked. So, myself, I've been a Michael Jackson fan, and there are people that I would like to meet. I wanted to meet uh, Elvis Presley, I wanted to meet Bruce Lee, I wanted to meet Michael Jackson, I wanted to meet certain. Uh, Famous people, whatever. I've never been fanatical over nobody. Some of you are. You're fanatics. I just like your music. I like what you represent. I'm not fanatical over you. Now, you see this poster here. I got this poster back in 2018. And some of you may think it's just simply because I like Terry Ellis. I don't know Terry Ellis. I've always liked En Vogue. When they first came out in April 1990, I've always liked En Vogue. I never went to their concert. I never was fanatical. I'm still not fanatical. I can take it or leave it. Now this poster represents the fact that I do like Terry Ellis. As you know, I, I like Invo. I'm not fanatical. I'm not in love with nobody. But the poster represents more than just a liking for Invo. I went to the concert. I was tired. I just got off the truck Friday night. Their concert was Saturday night. I had to drive, what, four hours in bad weather to the concert. Now, Terry did not treat me the way that Al Green treated my mother. She did not do that. When I first got to the concert, I was the only one, and I was real loud about it. Terry, Terry, Terry. I kept saying, Terry. When they came out from the very beginning, Terry. The audience knew I was hollering for Terry, and In Vogue knew I was hollering for Terry. But I'm telling you, I was so tired, it was hard for me or difficult for me to really enjoy what was going on. I, I tried to, I was just, I was tired. So, it got to the point, we were sitting down, and Terry was singing one of those slower type songs. And Terry came to the stage, to the front of the stage, and reached out, 
and she was reaching out to me. I'm so tired, I'm not even paying no real attention. The audience was saying, man, Terry's calling you. Go, go to Terry. Rona, Rona and Cindy actually backed, they took their chairs and backed off. They, they took their chairs and backed up and Terry came forward. And Terry reached out and I was holding her hand. I kissed her hand and she was singing to me. It was wonderful. Now, there are those who will say, that's her job. She's supposed to be nice to you. You, you pay for a ticket or uh, whatever. That's true. But there are also ways that you can be nasty. And, you know, play it off. She didn't have to touch my hand. She didn't have to mess with me like that. But she did. And so I, this is a moment I will always remember. I will always cherish. Shout out to Terry Ellis. Shout out to Invo. Thank you for making that moment for me. I will always remember that. It was nice. It does. People can say whatever they want to. That's my. That's her job or, or whatever. But you see what happened with my mother and Al Green. Some people are just nasty, arrogant, pompous type people anyway. That's just who that's just who he is. And from the little research that I've done on Al Green, he's just a nasty, arrogant, pompous type person anyway. Got into trouble. One of his girlfriends or whatever threw grits on him and he killed the girlfriend. He has a nasty history. To my knowledge, Terry and Invo don't have that type of reputation. Unless you listen to uh, <laughs> listen to uh, Luther Vandross. <laughs> if you listen to Luther Vandross, it might you might get a different story. They were on tour, and he actually kicked them off his tour. They were opening for Luther. <laughs> it's, it's messed up. Even though when they separated and had all that nastiness going on, you still don't see the such a nasty attitude from these ladies. It's a certain it's a certain type of class that you carry. Because that's just who they are anyway. Some people are just nasty, vile, profane people. Here you are, Al Green. You have people coming to see you, paying good money, taking their time to come see you, and you're going to do that. My mother and her friends, probably one of their best, uh, one of his best admirers. Like I told you, my, my uh, mother wasn't, Fanatical over him, over nobody. So I thank In Vogue and I thank uh, Terry for that wonderful experience. Also, this poster represents something else. There was a brother that I met there, security guard. We start talking and we found something in common, brother. Shout out to uh, Brother Tracy in uh, in Mississippi. That's what that's what the concert was. It was in Mississippi, Utica, Mississippi. I believe that's what it was. <clears throat> Shout out to our uh, brother Tracy. And I was talking to Brother Tracy. We was talking, had some things in common, and. Uh, I was just talking about I wish I, I wanted uh, one of those I wanted the I wanted the poster and at the time they were like, we, we can't give the poster away you know it can't you know I might have had opportunity maybe Invo would assign the, the the poster and this is not a piece of paper this is very very high quality it's some kind of plastic it's not paper 
So we exchanged numbers, myself and Brother Tracy. And uh, we were just talking. I never asked him to try to get the poster for me or whatever. It was just conversation. He knew that I would really like to have that poster. And he told me, called me and told me, Brother, I got that poster for you. What? And he did it all for free. He paid the postage, the handling. I gave him my address. And he sent this poster to me for nothing. I never asked him to do nothing. And of course, I was very thankful. And I did reimburse him the fees and everything that he paid for. That he paid for the the poster. He didn't have to do anything. So the poster represents how we supposed to treat each other as brothers and sisters. I didn't have to ask him to do nothing for me. He just saw that this would be nice, a nice uh something nice to do for somebody and he done it that's what it represents so the poster represents more than just some type of admiration for a, a, a young lady but the brotherhood the sisterhood how are we supposed to treat each other there are people who call me I'm a nobody I have 10 subscribers I get 10 views But people call me and they are shocked that I answered the phone and actually have a conversation. And I'm more of a listener. Some of you may think I like to run my mouth. I'm more of a listener and people call me and I listen. And they are shocked and they are thankful. I have listened to people six to eight hours I had a lady going through a divorce talked to her for hours she just wanted somebody to talk to she was going through a divorce she says you're a minister or something aren't you I said no not like that well I like how you talk and she began to talk about her her divorce. Turn out she is the daughter. She was the daughter of, of, of a uh, famous boxer. I forgot what the boxer name was. I would have to look it up. I haven't heard from her since, but I can. I just sit back and, and listen to people, and that's all what it's all about. We don't have to be pompous and arrogant like Al Green. And even though, I mean, I don't expect Terry to go out of her way. I'm a stranger. She don't know me. I don't know her. But it's just the way that we carry ourselves. We don't have to be the way some of us approach and interact with one another. I've never been that kind of way. I'm not better than you. And I'm not going to let nobody think that they are better than me. I'm not going to do that. It's mutual respect or nothing at all. So I just wanted to get this, tell this little story, bring it to you, give us something to talk about, jot down your comments, subscribe, like, all that type of good stuff. Subscribe to the Deacons of Reality uh, YouTube channel. And above all, Get on board the soul.